Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use formulas and functions with Excel to analyze inventory. In this case, we're going to be analyzing inventory for a retail store. The worksheet that I'm using is provided uh, courtesy of my friend Alan Friedman. Alan is a CPA and partner with Friedman Canenberg and Company based in Hartford, Connecticut. Now the formulas that we're going to use to analyze the inventory are gross profit dollars, gross profit percentage. We're also going to use an Excel formula to determine how quickly or how slowly our inventory is turning during the course of a year. Over here I have two formulas which are going to use a similar procedure. We want to be able to analyze product sales by product line as a percentage of the total sales for all of our products. Likewise, we want to be able to analyze the inventory by individual products as a percentage of the total inventory. Finally, we use an Excel formula to determine our GMROI, our gross margin return on inventory, sometimes known as gross margin return on investment. In this case, the investment is our inventory. Now, if you followed through in earlier lessons, and if you want to download, and I'll show you how to do this, this worksheet from the FK uh, Friedman Cannonberg work, uh, website, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to be working with a variation of um, that spreadsheet. Notice over here that certain of the cells are shaded. So every cell that is shaded is going to contain either a function or a formula by the end of this lesson. Now, notice that before I begin, that every cell in this worksheet contains a constant value. So I'm going to transform these constant values into formulas. Now, let's begin. The easiest function, or the most popular function to use in Excel, is called the SUM function. So in this case, I'm going to be using the SUM function for this cell, for this cell, for this cell, and for this cell. All right. Now, when we want to sum up a range of numbers, we use the sum function. It's best if we set up our worksheet so that the cell that's going to contain the sum function is immediately adjacent, either vertically or horizontally, to the numbers that we wish to add or to sum. So from that starting place on the home tab of the ribbon in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, notice over here the, in the editing group we have auto sum. If you use in Excel 2003, you'll see this uh, Greek symbol sigma on your standard toolbar. All we have to do is just click. And then you see what we have is we have an equal sign. All formulas, all functions in Excel begin, they must begin with the equal sign. Next, we have the name of the function. And then included inside left and right parentheses, we have the arguments. In other words, we have a range of the cells that we wish to sum. And I like to use Control Enter so that when I accept the formula, the active cell remains in place. Now, sum is so popular that many people just go ahead and write it. So equal, and I always type my functions in lower case. One thing that I really like about Excel 2007, Excel 2010, is I have function autocomplete. So if I press the tab key, it capitalizes the function and supplies the left parentheses. And then I can simply use my mouse to select the range. Notice that it takes my anchor cell up at the top, a colon, and the final cell. Just remember to use the right parentheses to close that off, and again, control enter. Now, since we're using cells that are adjacent and I want to be able to sum up gross profit dollars, all I have to do is use the autofill handle. Notice how my mouse changes from a white cross to a little black cross when I move it to the lower right corner. Watch again. White cross, move to the lower right corner, little black cross, click, and then drag across. So now we've summed up our sales, we've summed up our cost of goods sold, and now we've summed up our gross profit dollars. The beauty of using a formula or a function is that should a number change, in other words, if we discover that it was actually $575,000 in sales for uh, electric guitars, you see that the result of the formula updates. I'll use Control Z to undo that. So these values, these constant values, will change depending upon our category or the time of year that we're analyzing. 
However, all of the cells that contain a function or a formula, you write the formula once, and the result of the formula will update to stay current. All right, now let's come over here and do our final sum. Another way that we can copy this is to just select a cell that contains the formula that we wish to copy. Use Control C to place it on the clipboard. Notice the marching ants or the marquee around it. Come over here to this cell and use Control V to paste it. And then to remove that marquee, use the escape key. So now we just quickly copied and pasted, and now we're summing up our average inventory. All right, now let's come back here and see the next formula, that, or the first formula that we're going to write. You may have learned in college that you determine gross profit dollars by taking your sales or your revenue and then subtracting the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold is your direct cost, what you paid from your manufacturer for the products that you sold during this period. So let's come back here and I want to be able to determine my gross profit dollars. Remember that I have all constant values here, so I'm going to select them and delete them. I'm going to show you several ways that we can enter formulas. Uh, probably the most common is to enter the formula into one cell. So remember for gross profit dollars, it's a calculation or it's a formula. All calculations, formulas or functions begin with the equal sign. So in this case, what we want to do is move over into this row, select the sales for this category, use the minus sign, and then point to the cell that contains the cost of goods sold for the product that we wish to analyze, and use Control Enter. Again, I like to use Control Enter because it enters the formula, which is what's going to be stored in Excel. It shows me the result of that formula, and it keeps that as the active cell. Remember how I use the autofill? When I move my right, when I move my mouse into the lower right corner, see how it changes from the white cross into the low, uh, into that little uh, black cross, and then just click and drag it down. So now each of these cells contains a formula. Very, very easy. Now for our gross profit percentage, remember that what we're going to do for gross profit percentage is we're using a calculation. We're going to take the gross profit dollars that we just calculated and then divide that by the sales. Now this time I'm going to show you a slightly different way to perform this calculation. I'm going to select and delete the constant values. And I want to make sure that I have all of these cells in the range selected ahead of time. Select the cells ahead of time and then all you have to do is type the formula in once. All formulas begin with the equal sign. So I want to point to the gross profit dollars for, in this case, my top cell, my anchor cell. I want to use the division operator and I want to divide the gross profit dollars for the category by the sales for that category. Now press control enter. Watch what happens when I use control enter. You see how the formula is automatically copied down? So I really recommend that you get into the habit of using control enter rather than the enter. If you press enter, in other words, if I uh, went back there and typed one, two, three, and I press enter, you see how that active cell moves down to the next row, and then I have to come back and, you know, un, uh, and, and select it again. I'll use control Z to undo that. So I want to reinforce that over here, Excel is storing the formula, which I write once and leave it in place. Any values that change will automatically update all of the cells. I'll use Control Z to undo that. All right, now again, our average inventory is one of the three constant numbers that we provide Excel to analyze inventory. Our next calculation is going to calculate the frequency of how our inventory turns throughout the course of the year. So in this case, our formula is going to take the cost of goods sold, one of the numbers that we supply to uh, Excel, and divide that by our average inventory, another number that we supply to Excel. So I come back here, and again, in this case, I want to delete the content, I want to delete those constant values. Let me do the selection of all the cells once again, just to show you how efficient this is. So you make the selection of the cells that will contain all of the formulas. Type the formula in once. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the cost of goods sold, one of the numbers that we supply to Excel. 
we want to then divide that by our average inventory, another one of the numbers we supplied to Excel. And when you use Control Enter, you see how the formula is automatically copied down to all the cells in the selection. All right, now for our sales, in other words, sales for electric guitars as a percentage of the total for all of the sales, when we want to take over here to determine the inventory that we have as a percentage of the total inventory, we're going to be using a slightly different way to write the formula. So here are the two categories that I'm going to be calculating. Product sales by the product divided by the total sales inventory by product divided by total inventory. So over here what I want to do is again select and delete. So I'm going to write this once and then copy it down. Equals and I want to point over here to the sales, in this case the sales for electric guitars. And I want to divide it by the total sales. Now one thing that we have to do is that our categories, in other words, electric guitars, acoustic guitars, basses, that cell reference is going to move relative to its position. So B11 is going to become B12, but we want this part, the total sales, to remain frozen in place. The easiest way to make this part of the formula absolute is to use the F4 key. So you see when I press the function 4 key, it supplied a dollar sign in front of column B, dollar sign in front of row 25. So that part of the formula will always remain frozen in place. So notice that when I copy it down to the next row, I have a reference to the next product category, but it's dividing it by the total sales for all of the categories. Now I can quickly just copy that down with again auto fill. All right, now this time for the inventory as a percentage of the total inventory. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for the inventory that we have, the average inventory, by a specific product and divide that by the total inventory for all of the products. So this time I'll make my selection to delete these constant values. I'll keep them selected. I'll write the formula once. Again, make sure I select all of them equals, and in this case what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pointing over here to the average inventory for my first category, divide that by the total sales for all the category, and I'm going to remember to use the F4 keyboard shortcut to supply the dollar sign. Of course I could type them in if I wish, but F4 is a lot easier. Remember I made my selection ahead of time, so if I press Control Enter, then they're copied all the way down. All right, our final calculation, GMROI, let's come back here and review that. For our gross margin return on inventory, we're going to be taking our gross profit dollars, which again, remember we calculated as our first formula in this lesson, and then we want to divide that by the average inventory. So come over here, and I'll make the selection to delete the constant values, and I'll write it once equals, and in this case I want to point over here, remember, to the gross profit dollars. Remember, gross profit dollars was one of the calculations that we made, and I want to divide this by, in this case, the average inventory that we hold for that product. I'll use Control Enter. Remember, I made one cell selected, so I want to be able to take this formula and quickly copy it down. Easiest way is to use that autofill to copy it down. So there you've learned how to write the formula. Now just before I close this lesson, I want to give you a couple of, of shortcuts over here. Uh, if you have cells that are adjacent to each other that you want to sum, here's a really quick way that we can sum. Make the selection for all three of the cells, and then use the keyboard shortcut all equal, and it quickly adds in the sum for the sales, the sum for the cost that gets sold, the sum for the gross profit. So I selected the three cells ahead of time and then used Alt equal. And of course in this case the sum uh, function is in a cell that's adjacent to the cells that I wish to calculate. Another way that you can audit your formulas or better understand your formulas is to actually show the formulas in the cell rather than the return of the formula. So if you go to the formulas tab on the ribbon and over here in formula editing you can click show the formulas. So now if it's a constant value, you see the constant value. If it's a formula, 
you see the formula. So you see how the dollar signs that we used over here and we have our relative reference. If you use keyboard shortcuts instead or if you're using Excel 2003 or earlier here's the keyboard shortcut control plus the tilde and that is a toggle so control plus tilde will show the return of the formula control plus tilde toggles back to show you the actual cells that contain the formulas and the formulas. Now I mentioned that I would show you how to download this worksheet so go to www.fkco, Friedman Cannonberg Company, FKCO, and then move over here onto the Resources tab, Seminar Handouts, and this Inventory Analysis is the worksheet that you download. When you download it, you will come over here and this is what you will see. You'll see this worksheet. And also, uh, if you want to learn more of these tips, if you want to learn more about Excel, I invite you to visit my online shopping, shop.thecompanyrocks.com, and I will look for you in the next lesson.